morning, beautiful people. It is Monday, the last Monday of the school year. We've made it. <laughs> I survived it. And I'm not talking about surviving the school year. I actually had a pretty okay school year. I'm talking about my health has managed to survive and make it to the end. Because as you guys know, it's been a rough year for me. Between my own health problems and Asia's health problems, it's been a really hard year for me. Oh my gosh, it's just been a pain. But it is the last week of school. I was not here Friday morning, last or Friday last week, because I woke up Friday and I had pink eye in the other eye. I kid you not, I woke up Friday to pink eye in the other eye. And I had been using the over-the-counter pink eye drops. Those were not doing it. They just weren't working for me. So I missed Friday. I went to see my uh, doctor, got real prescription strength medication, started using it. I've been using it since Friday. And the second eye to come down with it actually got better right away. It really did. But the first eye to come down with the pink eye, it's still bothering me. I don't think it's pink eye anymore. Knock on wood. Yes, I'm a little superstitious. I don't think this is pink eye anymore. I think it's really now just the, the lasting side effects of the pink eye combined with my chronic dry eye syndrome. I think this eye is just really, really irritated. But I'm here. School is on. Today is going to be uh, kind of like a fun day. Today we are going to make, I think I showed this, I'm not sure. I was actually supposed to do this activity last week, but due to extenuating circumstances out of my control, this activity never happened. Today we are going to make these end of the year memory book laptops. I love doing these folder activities. I love the, the cutting and the gluing and the folding. And these come out really nice. So this is what my class will be doing today. Here's going to be the front of the folder, the back cover of the folder, and here are the assorted inside pieces, favorite moments, uh, other favorites, books, and this is second grade, but I pr this is for K through five. I printed the one that says fourth grade. Uh, favorite stuff here. Mem memories about math and reading and writing, friends, places I'm going, and then I also have, I'm not showing it, I cut out this long origami heart for autographs. And they must have had, a, I must have printed something that was an extra option. But so, this should keep the kids busy most of the day today. <clears throat> Honestly, between the cutting, the folding, the gluing, the assembling, and then writing in it, I'm kind of expecting this activity to take up the entire morning. I really, really am expecting it to take up the entire morning. And then lately, after lunch, we're coming back from lunch, and they are just wound up. They're just really hyper. You know, it's been warm. Today is supposed to be 92 degrees with humidity. So they're going to come back after lunch and they're going to be hot, tired, and grumpy. I am moving our morning daily five activities to this afternoon because this way they can come back from lunch and they can just spread out on the floor, lay down, do their read to self, um, we'll have a little computer time. So this way, usually my morning is the quietest part of the day because daily five, it just kind of makes for a very orderly, organized, calm environment. That will now happen this afternoon and we'll do the memory books this morning. I think that's a good plan, especially on a really hot day like today. Tomorrow afternoon is our birthday party. I sent home a flyer last week. Um, talking about how tomorrow any child that has a summertime birthday who ever gets to celebrate it in school year, they can all bring assorted treats tomorrow. We'll have a big party. I'll put Pandora on the radio. We'll sing the kids happy birthday. And that will be tomorrow afternoon. Wednesday afternoon is our, our awards program. It's very low key for fourth grade. <clears throat> 
If you are in fifth or sixth grade, they usually hold it in the auditorium, call the kids up on stage. For fourth grade, we just pass out our awards right here in the classrooms. Parents are invited to come, of course. Uh, I will be sure to have some kind of treats in here for tomorrow. I'll probably you know, run to Costco and buy a big jug of juice and maybe a couple packs of cookies and put out some little treats for parents to show up. But honestly, the whole program for the awards it's like five minutes. I mean, it, it's only five minutes long. And I don't do, oh, best classroom artist, and who has the best smile? Honestly, there's three awards. Academic achievement, citizenship, perfect attendance. You, if you get one of those three, congratulations. If you didn't earn one of those three, sorry. I am not a person who believes every child gets a trophy just because you showed up. That's just really not who I am. I really believe that if you want an award, you need to work and earn the award. Especially citizenship. Citizenship just requires you to behave. You know, that's really all you gotta do. Um, so, that's what's going on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday are half a days of school. And I will be honest, Thursday and Friday, we will not be doing any work of any kind. Especially because in this district, as of Wednesday, they have to take everything home. They are not even allowed to bring backpacks to school on Thursday and Friday because we're trying to eliminate the shaving cream and the eggs and things like that that sometimes happens on the last day of school. So they're not even allowed to bring anything. So Thursday and Friday will be 100% cleaning. Just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And on the boardwalk, we have K1, 2, 3, 4. A lot of times what I will do on Thursday and Friday, fourth graders love to clean. You tell me to get on my hands and knees and scrub the linoleum, and I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Not happening. You tell fourth graders, you, hey, who wants to scrub the bathroom floor? They will fight to be the one to get the job. So Thursday and Friday, I tend to loan my fourth graders out to the K-1-2-3 teachers, um, and they will help the teachers to clean the portables, hang things that are too high for you know, kindergartners to hang, to help them load materials into their vehicles for things that they're taking home on those days. And for the kids in here, it's like they won the lottery. They're so excited to get to help their former teachers. So that is the plan for this week. And we are going all the way through to Friday. Our last day is June 16th. With that, I am going to stop talking because I brought more pink and white trim. I have things to do, things to hang, and decoration. That didn't sound right. Decorations to get done. Talk to you soon. One thing I wanted to share with you guys, at the end of the year, I struggle to figure out what to do for my students and my para that's in the room. I never really know what to get them. Usually I'll get my para like a gift card to somewhere. Um, although in the past I've gotten like my para pro a gift card to Starbucks for like 20 bucks only to find out later they hate Starbucks or something. So I've actually had some misses with you know, end of the year presents. I want to give out a super shout out to Bridget from the Letter Classroom and even Pocketful of Primary um, because I totally stole their ideas. Totally, totally stole their ideas. I got my classroom helper one of the Turkish towels from Dandelion. I have a little thank you card in there and put a ribbon, a, a tag on it. I got her that, and I also got her a matching water bottle. Unfortunately, my water bottle did not arrive. I mean, and I placed this order with Amazon like two weeks ago. And at the time, the Turkish towel arrived in 48 hours. It was prime. What I didn't realize was that the water bottle was not prime. And so I placed the order. The Turkish towel showed up right away. Also, I bought a couple for myself and for a few other people. Oh my God, Bridget's right, they're amazing. Totally amazing. But so her towel showed up right away, but her water bottle hasn't shown. And it turns out the water bottle is not actually scheduled to come 
until like Monday of next week. That sucks. Totally sucks. So if I get it next week, I'm hoping by some miracle it comes before Friday. Although I don't even think she's here all week. I think her last day is tomorrow. So I'm really bummed, but I'll save it for her for next year. But then for the students, in past years, I've given them Play-Doh or Bubbles. But this year, um, I actually got them all little sunglasses. I found a free printable on TPT. My future so bright, I have to wear shades. Love Mrs. Beitler. Tied them all on. And I was really impressed with these because they're actually UV 400. So they actually do protect the kids' eyes, which is amazing. Because a lot of the ones on Amazon Prime, if you were looking at them, you know, they're like party favors. They're sunglasses, but they didn't offer any UV protection for their eyes whatsoever. And, but then I kept scrolling through and scrolling through. And finally, I found these. I will be sure to link them in the video. Um, I know it's kind of too late for people to do that this year. But if you want to do it for next year for some reason... But these ones, they were, I mean, the price came out to like 78 cents a pair for the sunglasses. And the printable was free. The ribbon, I had leftover Christmas ribbon. So it, it was like $27 for me to buy enough for the whole classroom. That's actually really inexpensive to buy a present for every kid in the room. It really was. So, yeah, I will link those in this, in this video if you want to use this resource in your own room next year. So, just wanted to share those and give credit where credit was due. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Pocketful of Primary, because I'll be honest, I have been so busy and so many other things going on, I had yet to even think about end of the year gifts, and so watching your videos was a lifesaver. I know I should be grateful my portables have air conditioning, although it is currently 86 degrees outside and we are going up to 94 today. It's hot in here. Even with those air conditioners on full blast, it's not keeping up with the heat. So I'm really excited. I wanted to show you. I got one of the big bulletin boards up and there it is. The plywood paper or the weathered board. I love it. Absolutely love it. And now I'm going to have to get the same paper up over here and that's just going to add such an amazing look. I still have this one stone wall over here that I have not taken down yet and I'll be honest I haven't taken it down because to take all them I have to move all this furniture including the very very heavy filing cabinet. <coughs> Excuse me. That is going to be a ton of work and that filing cabinet is packed so heavy and I'm already so hot I can't even imagine trying to move that thing right now. So that stone wallpaper is totally coming down. Absolutely. Just not today. <laughs> I know I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. I'll get it down. I promise. I'll get it down. Just not today. Um, I'm thinking about having maybe that wall. I need to order more of this. I do have another roll, which is enough to do that bulletin board over there. And to maybe put up some like strips between the windows. But I'm thinking I might make this whole wall an accent wall with the planking. Or if not this wall perhaps this wall because since I would only have to put paper here along the top and right there it actually would not require that much bulletin paper to do just that and to make that wall a focus wall or a focal point excuse me I ate my food too fast for lunch <laughs> but so I do love it because I'll be honest when I first saw that I couldn't, so many of you guys were recommending it to me, and that's even the paper that Schoolgirl Style used in the set that I bought, the Vintage Chic Pink, but I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it, it's kind of ugly looking, 
it's perfect. I I love the look of it. It's it's exactly what the room needed. Um, in fact, I'm loving this much more than I'm loving the black right now. There's a real possible since that's a stapled one. It's so easy to put up and down on the blink of a dime. I am seriously contemplating redoing that one over there. The one on the back, the big word wall, I'm going to leave that one black just because I want the word wall words to really stand out and to pop. And I'm afraid that if I try to put word wall words on this with the textured paper, I'm afraid the words would just kind of blend in and disappear and I don't want that. A word wall that you can't read is useless. So the word wall will definitely stay black but if I put the paper up all around it that's perfect because then you'd want the word wall to be black and to have the actual peach wall covered in this paper. So I will do this one in board put board around there. I'm probably going to have to order another roll off Amazon Prime though because I don't think I have enough. I, I really, I don't think I have enough to do because I need to do one, two, and that focal point. I don't have enough paper to do the back wall. So my top priority right now will definitely be the two bulletin boards to get those done before we leave for the end of the school year. The kids are having a blast making their memory lap books. Um, this is how they're turning out. This is the one I've been using for modeling for them. But so mine's not done or colored or anything whereas the kids are filling theirs in. But here's your cover. Fourth grade, end of the year lap book, signature, me and my teacher. And you open up in here and we have this accordion heart for autographs. And this opens up to show all their favorites, my favorite books this year, and they'll write the titles on the on the you know stick part, and they're going to color the books. Favorite subject books, hobby, sport, food, life in fourth grade, and they fill out each one of the flip charts. And then something I learned in math, science, and social studies and writing. I am going places, achievements for this from this year, um, goals for next year, advice I have for kids next year, they'll fill this in, and then tomorrow, because I'm very busy today, I'm going to write a special note to every child on the bottom of their lap book. So that's how they're coming out. The kids are loving them. We do still need to put on the back page. And so this one will just go right here on the very back and they can write a memory from every month of the school year. So I love those and they love them. Even the boys, I was afraid the boys might find this a little silly or something, even the boys are really enjoying this activity. Um, I bought this off TPT a couple years ago. I will be sure to link it in the description box below because if you're still in school like I am for a few more days you may have time to get this run off and have it for your kids. So I'm going to get back to work though because I only have like four minutes before my kids come back from lunch and I need to... Okay, I just got to show you this room. Oh my god, I don't think my room has ever looked like... Look at this! Oh my god! I'm just now noticing that my room looks like colored paper just got like shot out of cannons everywhere. Wow. Lots of cleaning this afternoon. Whole lot of cleaning. I can't believe I'm vlogging and I look like this. Honestly, I am so hot. It's like 92 degrees outside and even with those air conditioners this room is so hot and then I was hanging all this paper while they were working on their um, memory lap books and I just worked up a sweat like you would not believe I want to go home 
I want to take a cool shower and get the sweat and yuck out of my hair. <laughs> but I am loving the way the room is coming. The kids had a blast today. Their sunglasses, oh my god, they were so funny with their sunglasses today because I wasn't going to give them to them until Wednesday, but this week is so hot and the sun is so bright. I said, you know what? Let's give them to them today and let them enjoy them all week. So it was cute though because my kids were strutting around the building like they were the bomb. Let me tell you, it was funny. So I'm like teacher of the year right now because I gave out sunglasses. But here is the room, the way it's coming out. I am loving the softer look of the wooden plank. And I'm totally convinced. I probably won't do it until uh, August when I come back. But I am. I'm going to use the wood paper to outline that big bulletin board word wall for next year. And then I'll be done. So once I do that, like the decorating for the room is pretty much done. And I do have a, a ton of cleaning to do, organizing to do. Um, I've taken all of my fourth grade chapter books home to my basement. And all of the first grade books have now come in but they've literally come in as just buckets of books literally just buckets and buckets of books and I've got books shoved into every nook and cranny of the room there's no organization they're not leveled they're not grouped and that is a massive undertaking anyone who's ever labeled and organized a classroom library knows that is just a huge job so I'd like to spend a little time working on that before I go home for summer vacation. I don't want to save all that for next year because I really want it to be like ready to go right away. So I am going to sign off on today's vlog because I am hot and I am tired. It was a long day, but it was a very productive day. So good night for, or not, what am I saying good night? It's 3.05, it is not nighttime, I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm I'm officially babbling. Talk to you later. Morning. Happy Wednesday. Although quite frankly, between me and you, there's not too much to be happy about today. First of all, I didn't vlog yesterday because I did a bonehead thing. I forgot to take the camera to work. Yep, end of story. I forgot to take the camera to work. Left the camera next to the battery charger and the battery in the charger. And I drove off and went to work. Today is Wednesday. I have the camera, but I am angry. And I'm not angry at anyone. I am just angry. I am angry at life. My husband right now is home. He has pink eye in both eyes. And my husband, who like never gets sick and when he does get sick it doesn't take him down he will just power through it well pink eye has taken him down it's the first time in his life he's ever had it he's miserable he's cranky he's grumpy he's short of temper and then he got it yesterday so he left work at lunchtime to go home and spend the rest of the day at home he's missing today he's probably gonna miss tomorrow because let's be honest he's insanely contagious well I woke up this morning and I'll be a son of a gun. I have pink eye again in the original eye. I am so angry. I am so, oh, I am just so angry. I don't have time for this. I'm going to work. I don't care if I'm contagious. I'm sorry if my students catch it, but I am not allowed in my classroom again after Friday. They expect the classrooms to be shut down. They expect the paperwork to be turned in. And because I missed three days of work last week, I am insanely behind. I have never been this behind ever when there's only two days of school left after today. My paperwork's not finished. <coughs> Excuse me. My bookshelves aren't wrapped. The room's not done. I am insane behind. And now, in theory, I shouldn't be going to work today or probably tomorrow because I am contagious. Well, guess what? If I'm going to be done by Friday, I have to go to work. I have no choice. So, pink eye, screw you. Go into work. Hope my students don't catch it. But that's all there is to it. I'm going. And wow, <laughs> I am just, oh, I am just, 
You guys like my videos because you say I keep it real. Well, let me tell you, I'm keeping it real right now. I'm furious. I'm freaking furious. And I just know with me and my husband, both with pink eye, there's no way my boys are not going to catch it. So we're going to all start summer vacation, all of us, with pink eye. Oh, yay, joy, isn't that just freaking awesome? I'm in my classroom, and I'm a little bit calmer than I was in the car driving to work. I'm not sure that rant will make it into the video. It probably will, because I have a feeling it was probably a little funny in hindsight, although it didn't feel funny at the time when I was making the rant. My eye doesn't look super bad yet. If you could see my husband right now with both eyes, he looks like he got into a fight with Mike Tyson. Seriously, and lost, and lost badly. I'm hoping this eye doesn't become a flaming ball of inferno before 2.30 today, because at 2.30 today is when my parents are showing up for me to pass out their children's awards. And I would really like to not look like a freak. It's bad enough I don't have on any eyeshadow, eyeliner, or mascara. You guys know me. I don't leave the house without makeup. But I don't want to get all my products that I just repurchased contaminated again. Although I did use those products yesterday. <sighs> I don't know. So anyway, I came in this morning and I very quickly ran around the room and signed all of my students' memory books because they wanted me to sign them yesterday, but I had a lot of things going on. I didn't have time to sign them yesterday. Uh, we did have our birthday party celebration in the afternoon. There was a lot of cupcakes, lots of treats, cookies, candy. So the kids had a lot of fun. We put on some music and just kind of had a good afternoon. This morning, um, we need to clean out all of their cubbies. And wow, apparently we have not cleaned cubbies in a while because these are definitely a hot mess. So what I want to do for next year, oh, I don't think I've told you guys, I am keeping my tables for next year, even though I'll be teaching first grade. Uh, last week on moving up day, all of the kindergartners came to my room that I'm going to have as first graders and surprisingly, they all fit at the tables perfectly well. I mean, there was there's no reason for me to take this furniture out and bring in the first grade furniture that's in that classroom down the boardwalk because they, they fit. It was perfectly fine. And I gotta say, the desks that are in that first grade classroom, they're falling apart. They are so falling apart. So right now, for me to take 10 steps backward and give up all my new furniture in exchange for another set of broken desks that are smaller, I can't do it. So I'm definitely keeping my furniture. I've already informed my principal that even though I'm teaching first grade next year, my furniture is staying. What I want to do for next year, I want to get rid of all the milk crates and I want to purchase these. Um, basically, I want to swap out this for two of these on every table. So if I put a sterilite container with three drawers here, and then a sterilite container with three drawers here, that means I will have six drawers for six kids. That's perfect. And I've already tested it out. Folders and everything, it fits. They're, they're math journals, they all fit inside those drawers perfectly fine. It'll hold everything and that will make for a much neater room because some of the students are very meticulous. Like if you look at this one, you can tell that you definitely have a type A personality in charge of these cubbies. And then you look at that one and you can tell you do not have a type A personality in charge of those cubbies. I'm type A all the way. Sometimes it's pain, but I've learned to work with it after 40 plus years. I just, I embrace my neuroses. So anyway, that's the plan for next year. So I would actually need 10, ooh, that's going to be expensive. But I do, I need 10 Sterilite containers purchased to go for every table next year 
And then um, today, one of the things we're going to do this morning to fill time is I'm going to pull out all the manipulatives and just let the kids have fun with them. I'll pull out the pattern blocks on one table, the dominoes on the other table, and just kind of create rotations and let them go around in a circle playing with the different stuff. And then as we're putting it all away, I will actually have some of the students load those in the back seat of my car. And I'm going to take those home because on my to-do list for summer vacation is to paint those, to spray paint the, the, um, the, oof, can't think of, not the drawers, but the frames. I'm going to paint the frames black. Um, I'm sick of scrubbing them every year. I'm sick of trying to keep the white clean. I know somebody commented to use Comet and a rag and scrub it. I'm sick of scrubbing. I'm just going to paint those bad boys black, call it a day, and then I'll probably even buy the 10 that I purchased during the summer vacation for the tables. If I can't purchase black, I'll buy the white ones and spray paint them black as well. I just You get sick and tired of cleaning things every year, over and over, multiple times a year. So that is on the agenda today. So math rotations, some of them still need to finish up their memory lab books, although I'm not planning on spending a lot of time doing that today. They, they should be done. They've had Monday and Tuesday to work on it. If you're not done by now, it means you spent too much time talking and not enough time gluing and cutting. So, and then the awards is this afternoon. Also today I do have a few coloring sheets, a few word searches to just kind of fill the time in. They will be taking everything home today. When they leave today, these milk crates will be completely, totally empty. There will be nothing left in them. Because Thursday and Friday are half a days and they are not allowed to bring backpacks to school. They're literally supposed to come tomorrow empty-handed. I will still have the buckets on the tables with some pencils and some crayons in them because all the supplies in the buckets are mine. So that will still be here for Thursday and Friday. So if I have a word search or something to do, they can do that too. But mostly Thursday and Friday, we will be cleaning the room, scrubbing down things, and they love to do that, as I said before. So I'm going to stop talking right now, though, because I am so far behind. I mean, this room looks like I'm ready to start school, not end the year. I have so much I need to do. And even though the room looks relatively clean, what it really isn't is organized. Usually by the when I wrap up my bookcases, the books are leveled, they're in order, everything's been sorted, things have been washed. Uh, if something needed taping, everything's been taped. None of that has happened this year. At, between changing grade levels and having to take fourth grade stuff home, bringing first grade stuff back, getting first grade materials from other people, and then missing three days of work last week, nothing in this room is sorted, organized, categorized, and no, I have never been officially diagnosed with OCD, but I do have some OCD tendencies, and just having that knowledge in my head that the room is not the way I want it gives me anxiety and makes me angry. So I got to get to work. I'm going to stop talking right now so I can calm myself down before I hyperventilate. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. I've just spent the last 50 minutes organizing and in that time I've managed to get this nice and neat. That's my shower curtain. And I've also managed to make this huge mess. Um, I was not aware of just how much useless stuff was on that shelf. I'll be honest, when I think about this past school year, and even last year for that matter, I really haven't used what's on this shelf. Some of the things I have, I, let me take that, there's been a few things that I've pulled from and I have used, but honestly, most of what was on that shelving unit has just been sitting there for a very, very long time. And I'm just, because it was behind a shower curtain, it wasn't bothering me, it wasn't in the way, out of sight, out of mind. But then in the meantime, I'm getting piles of stuff all around the room when if I had simply purged 
this big old shelving unit a long time ago, I could fit a lot more stuff in there. So yes, I've been working very hard for 50 minutes. And I've got about, oh, 10 more minutes for the kids come in. So I'm going to do about 10 more minutes of work. And then when they do come in, I'm going to give the kids some trash bags and ask them to fill all that crap in the trash bags and take it down to the dumpster. So yes, I'm organizing and it feels good. It feels so good. I love throwing things away. Oh my god, nothing makes me happier than either throwing things away, donating things to charity, or giving things to people who can use it. So yes, that makes me feel good. It's bringing my anxiety down. It is lunchtime. The kids are at lunch. I literally just, I brought food to like cook here at the school, like my I literally just grabbed a piece of the pizza here in the cafeteria. I just wolfed it down and I want to get back to work in this room. I'm feeling better about being ready for next year. These are all of my first grade leveled books, my sunshine books, my foundations, right group, a uh, wide variety, even some old Mondo books. Just lots of, lots and lots of those little small readers that I used when I taught first grade. These are a lot of the books that are the foundations for my guided reading lessons, as well as actually the, um, the, oh, I'm tired, <laughs> um, the reading series. The reading series in first grade for this one has a whole bunch of little leveled readers and I will be the first person to say don't give me a reading series. Seriously, don't give me a reading series. I'll do it my own way. But I make exception with that in first grade because at least with the reading series, that this series has been in our school district since like 1999, honest to God. But it starts off very simple. It introduces a few letters, you know, S, A, M, T, P, and right away you start getting some simple stories, you know, I am Sam. Uh, here is Sam and just it's excuse me it just it's a very easy series to start teaching first grade with so I will actually be using the reading series in my guided reading groups I will be using my right group books and my foundations books in my guided reading groups a lot of these books will also end up in the students um, tubs for next year when Daily Five starts in. I've done Daily Five in first grade before, and when I did it, I started Daily Five literally on the very first day of first grade. I don't think I will do that with the upcoming school year. I think I'm gonna focus really hard on in September with just getting phonics going, math going, of course we will be definitely be doing reading and words and all that stuff, but to actually get the rotations going, building up all of our stamina, I probably will not start daily five in my first grade classroom until about the third or fourth week of school. With the little ones, they're so so helpless. It's like herding cats. <laughs> Remember, this is my ninth time going into first grade. In the beginning, September, it really is like herding cats. So there's so many other things that you're focused on to get moving into the room and to get them to, you know, sit still again. And to, you know, how do we use the bathroom and how do we go to the lunchroom? And, and there's so many routines that need to be taught in first grade. At the, in September that honestly daily five will probably start the third week of September give me the first two weeks to just take care of a lot of business stuff that needs to be taken care of to review alphabet to review handwriting and a lot of those things because unfortunately a lot of our children because they don't speak English as their primary language this whole year of kindergarten where they've been learning English, learning ABCs, learning letters and sounds and sight words, they're now going to go home for about 10 weeks in an environment where they don't see any of that. So when they do come back to us in September as first graders, we have, there's a lot of loss 
in that first month of September. We have to reignite those memories and pull that information back out of them again because honestly learning it's like anything else use it or lose it and a lot of our kids will lose their kindergarten skills over the course of the summer not all of them you know those they'll, they'll still retain some of it but it is a lot like starting over so I'm gonna stop talking though because I really want to use my lunch period because oh my god I have parents coming in this room in about <laughs> Um, let's see, it is 10 to 12, and I have parents going to be in this classroom at 2.30. And it can't look like this for the awards program that's happening in my classroom at 2.30. I will die if my parents walked into this. I have to fix this, and I have to fix it now. So I'm not even sure how I did it, but somehow I managed to get the room clean before parents came. Here's my desk, which is far better than it's been in like this entire week. Over here, I got this corner all cleaned up. We've got chairs ready for parents to come. Still got some stuff over there, but it's just gonna have to stay because I'm done. I'm so done. And then everything else on top of this is now gone. And this is all tidied up and more tidy. Honestly, it's a miracle and the door just knocked. Parent is here. The day is all done, the kids are gone, and I'm a little disappointed. Out of all these kids, I only had three parents show up today. I actually had three kids go home early. The parents showed up to the office, and at like 2 o'clock, I got a phone call from the office saying, can you send so-and-so to the office with their belongings and their awards? They're going home now. Which, it's like, okay, you're here. You're a parent, your child's about to get an award. You can't stay 25 more minutes and be part of the in-class celebration. So I'm a little bummed out by that. I mean, honestly, and really, even though I said I have three parents who came, two of them were for one child. So really only two kids out of my entire classroom had people show up to the room to be here to celebrate their getting their awards. That is by far the lowest attendance I've ever, ever had for an awards presentation. I understand some parents work, I understand they can't make it. Still, two kids out of 30, that was, that was bad. That was a bad, bad turnout. Um, plus, not to mention, I worked so hard to get this room presentable for the, you know, all of the parents who were supposed to come for the awards ceremony. But you know what? The room had to be cleaned anyway, so it's done. Um, I'm actually going to stay late today. Hopefully not too late. It's 3.05 right now. I'm kind of hoping to leave here at about 4.30-ish um, to go home. I have to go to the pharmacy, pick up some prescriptions, and then go home and do dinner. But I need to start wrapping up bookshelves and all the things that I've managed to organize. I want to get all that sealed up and start packing her up. Because I already know for Thursday and Friday, I'm actually expecting a very low turnout. Um, first of all, they're half a days. And you would be amazed how many of our students here at our Title I school, they just don't come for half a days. And I've already had at least a dozen parents tell me, oh, won't see you after Wednesday. So I'm expecting to have maybe at most 15 kids in the room tomorrow and Friday. And so we're just going to be scrubbing some walls and doing some cleaning around here. It is 440 and I am about to call it a day here. I got a lot of work done in the hour and 40 minutes since the children left. I've managed to get things pushed to this wall, bookcases wrapped in pl uh, plastic tablecloths. I got the stone wallpaper off this wall finally, wrapped this bookshelf, cleared things out of over here, cleared things out of that corner, although I'm probably going to tuck a few things back in that corner. This table became a hot mess again. And I do have some things lying around the room. But all in all, I'm feeling a lot better going into 
tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Um, tomorrow and for Thursday, tomorrow and Friday are half a days with students, which means I will have the kids here to help me in the morning, get things to my car, do a few errands and running around, packing up for me. But then I will have Thursday afternoon to take care of paperwork. My report cards are done, so the only thing left for me to do is my C69s and attendance. I need to do my attendance, which I can't do until Friday anyway. So, except for my C69s, which that's a, that's like their permanent records. You have to transfer grades into all of that. So except for my C69s, my attendance, oh, and my order form for next year. They're giving us um, $100 to buy whatever we want to buy for the classroom. So I need to do that. So I need to get those three pieces of paperwork done, finish up this room, and that's it. <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. Happy Thursday. One more day to go after today and we're done for the summer. Uh, I will be finished tomorrow when I leave. That's the good news because they really do want you to be done when you leave tomorrow. They kind of, they really don't want the teachers to come back next week because they get started right away with whatever building maintenance improvements that need to be done. So it's very exciting to be, to know it's just one more day to go. I'm so ready for this year to be done. It's not because it was a bad school year. It's not because I had a bad class. It's not even because I'm tired of teaching. Honestly, I just need to like focus on my health and my family's health and we're all ready for a break. My husband has come back down with his head cold. I'm a little stuffy this morning. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if it's because I'm getting a little older or just because we're all under a lot of stress, but yeah, I just kind of need to like stop working for a while and just focus on on health and you know start. I haven't done Pilates in ages just because there's no time. Uh, I'll be honest, we're living right now kind of on processed foods just because it's like quick cook something, make it, serve it, just get it done. So yeah, next week is going to be complete revamping of the home life routines and focusing on nutrition and Pilates and just, just trying to get ourselves healthy again <laughs> and over the pink eye that refuses to leave. It's looking better today, but it's still very, I just kind of like keep this eye closed. Most times I like go get a patch and put a patch over the eye. Um, so that's everything that's going on there. The room is coming together today because the only thing I have left in these in the classroom are coloring pencils, crayons, and pencils. That is it. I have some coloring pages. I have some word searches. And if worse comes to worse, I'll find something on Netflix and show a video on the projector. Um, I will be having some of my students go around from room to room helping the other teachers clean. Um, they love to help. I know I've mentioned this, and so I'm not going to talk about it too much. In fact, I feel like I'm kind of rambling. I feel like I'm not really saying anything new this morning. But basically, it's kind of because there really is nothing new to talk about. I'm not teaching some grand lesson plan to share with you guys. It really is the end of the year. It really is just, let's wrap it up, people, and go home. I will be vlogging over the summer. I know a lot of you have asked me since I changed the, the handle from Tina Beitler to a cozy classroom. Am I only going to be doing teacher videos from now on? Nope. I will be doing all kinds of videos because if there's one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to be boxed in. That kind of happened to me with my blog, One Tired Working Mommy. Um, my blog, it was, it was a mom blog obviously, but was also like kind of a snarky, grumpy mom, tired mom blog. And that's who I was for a couple of years. I was teaching full time, my kids were young, but then once my children got older and life settled down into a more workable routine, that blog didn't represent who I was anymore. But at the same time, I was like, oh my God, do I really want to start a brand new blog and start all over from scratch? I put so much work into that, spent years getting my subscribers, and the answer was no. So I ended up continuing to do that blog, even though I felt completely boxed into a corner and I wasn't enjoying it anymore. I don't want that to happen to YouTube. 
I love doing YouTube. I admit, the last couple months I've been doing it a little less frequently just because I've been overwhelmed. But, you know, summer is coming and I will be doing all kinds of vlogs. I will be doing, I'm about to do like in a week or so, what I'm packing to go to Lansing with. I'm, I'll be doing a room tour for my hotel room. I'll be doing, I'll be doing all kinds of vlogs. And will there always be education vlogs in there? Yes, because in my heart of hearts, I really am a teacher vlogger. But I don't want to get trapped into, I can only do one kind of content. Some of you have suggested creating a second channel for that other kind of content. Guys, let's be real. I am just keeping it all together with one channel, one job, and one family. For the life of me, I cannot even fathom creating a second YouTube channel. I don't have the time, I don't have the energy. So it's just going to be the one channel and you guys can watch the videos you want to watch and you can say nope to the videos you don't want to watch. So that's, that's just the way it's got to be for my own sanity. I just got back to my room. The kids are gone. We had our luncheon. Every year at this time, we have a luncheon to celebrate the retirees and wish them well. <clears throat> and it's kind of like a potluck. We all bring stuff. And so I today, I just brought guacamole and chips this year. In past years, I've brought Swedish meatballs and different things. Last year, I brought pizza. But I kind of went light this year with guacamole and chips. I am very full, though. It was a lot of food. Between when you have a staff this big and everybody brings food, it's a lot of food. With the room right now, I need to really concentrate over here and concentrate on this table. As you can see, <laughs> I have literally folded up the tables, stacked the chairs. I have one more table to fold up and put away. I got four of my Sterilites in the backseat of my car right now. They're going home to be spray painted over the summer. I'll take that one home tomorrow. Everything's just kind of getting piled back here against the back of the room. I went to work on my hideous closet and even though it doesn't look so great now, it is a hundred times better than what it was. I need to borrow a vacuum cleaner, although honestly, I may just leave it because they do have summer custodians and the custodians will clean the floor over the summer. So I'm going to spend the next couple hours tidying up, get, finding a home for any objects still out and about. I need to wrap those bookcases in the back corner to protect the materials from summer vacation, to make sure, one, to secure them from the summer school staff. We, we don't know who would be in here. But also just to keep them free of dust and things like that. Also, one thing I did do, to add a little character to the room, I put in a fireplace because nothing says huga like a cat on a rug next to a fireplace. And then because this is first grade, I had this bulletin board. I bought this years ago and I had yet to use it because I never really had a place to put it. But I love that, the little bear in the door with the shutters. So just to just add a little, a little friendliness, a little more warmth and character to the room. And then I put over here. A little a little sign. Home is where the heart is. And even though this isn't home, it's like I tell the children, this is like your second home. When you're because a lot of us spend more time in our classrooms than we do in our real honest to God homes. So it's kind of like your second home. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy last day of school. Woo! I made it. I survived. This has been an incredibly rough year and I am so happy that today is the last day. I just, I am so, so grateful that I did it. I made it. Um, it's been a rough year and not because of school issues, just because of life in general. It's been a rough year. So I'm so, oh, so grateful that today is Friday, the last day. Today is a half a day of school for the kids. Um, the only thing we're going to do today is watch a movie. There's, at this point, everything is gone. You know, furniture's gone, books are gone, pencils are gone, crayons are gone. We can't even do a word search. 
So we're just going to watch a movie on the overhead today. I have a Netflix account. I'll pick out a few different things. I think they're going to want to watch Trolls. I'm not sure. But so, yeah, they're just the kids that show up today will watch a movie. I only have to do a few things. I need to wrap these bookcases. Um, I have one tablecloth left. When I use that up, I will then go and get some butcher paper from the building. And then I also need to wrap up this rolling book cart just to keep the books from getting covered with dust and everything. So that is the only thing left to do in the room besides hang my um, window treatments. I sat at home last night, hole punched them, strung ribbon through them, and I have them all put together, ready to go. So I will get those hung today. So honestly, what I need to do in the room should take no more than a half an hour. And then after that half an hour is over, the rest of the day will be spent taking care of you know student records and folders and files and paperwork and get all that done. And yes. It will be over. It will be done. And as I said yesterday, my big summer focus really is going to be on myself. And I don't mean that to sound selfish, but I need, I feel like I just need to get my health under control. I need to get my family's health back under control. I would like to lose a little weight. I know my son AJ could stand to lose a few pounds. I need to meal plan and just. I need to make some changes at home for the benefit of all of my family, including myself. So that's going to be the focus of next week, my first week off of school. So yes, I survived. I survived. Sorry if I'm a bit of a mess. I'm a little, a little sweaty. I was in the main building, but I am all checked out turned in all the files, the new class list for next year, all the records, report cards, the electronic key. I am done. School year 2016-2017 is officially over. I am so glad you guys took this journey with me and I'm sorry my hands are shaking. I'm tired and I'm hot and sweaty. So I am going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me in the future, click the subscribe button. And I'm probably going to take a week off from vlogging, I think. Not entirely sure on that one, but yeah, I think I'm probably going to take about a week off and just kind of breathe. I think that'll be good. But I will be back very soon with more vlogs of all kinds, not just school stuff, but other little peeks into my life, because I know you guys like to see more than just the school stuff. So I will be back soon. Thanks for watching, and I really appreciate all your support.